Hello and welcome to this video series on Git Kraken. Git Kraken is a GUI tool for using Git. And I'm using this tool and I'm really happy with it. So I would like to share this with you all. My name is Mohammed and I will walk you through how we can use it. In this introductory video, we will talk about the topics we're gonna cover in this video series and what are our target audience. So the topics we're gonna cover and before going towards the topics we're gonna cover we have some prerequisites i am assuming that you have some basic knowledge of git and you also know how we can use some basic git commands like git config git add git commit git status git branch git checkout merge and push because i'm not going to cover these things in detail rather i will use the git tracking tool and git tracking tool will use these commands at the back so it is necessary that you must know about get some basic information is necessary to use this video series so what we're gonna do we're gonna initialize the repository we're gonna commit some files we will amend some commit squash commit we will create and merge branches locally and then we will push to the remote repository now what are our target audience a student are the main target audience and they can get they can learn a lot from this junior developers who are still in junior position and they can understand the working of git with this tool devops professionals can also use this video series and they can also learn a lot about this and this will be a helpful tool for them as well for senior developers mostly senior developers use the integrated git with the ide for example, if they are using IntelliJ, NetBeans, or Eclipse. So, in all these IDEs, they have the plugins for using Git, and senior developers mostly use the Git plugin. But this is this GUI tool is more interactive, it's more easy to use, and it's more expressive than the IDE. Business analyst is also very, very helpful for the business analyst and technical project manager. So, that's it and i will see you in next video hello and welcome to the video series on git kraken today we will discuss about the gui tool and we will create and initialize a repository so i have already downloaded the git kraken so but for your uh, information you can go to the gitkraken.com and you can download this free gui tool so we're going to use this and we i have already downloaded this tool so let's open it. I have the git tracking here. So now we have this um, GUI tool and what we want to do is first we will create a repository on our machine, on, on my local machine. And then we will use this to commit some files and to use some git command. So now we will create a local repository and then we will work on that uh, repository. So I'll click on start local repo i click on the start local repo and i can choose the location where i want to initialize so here i can say i can create a new folder say kraken one and i want to use this folder as a git folder so i'll select this kraken one and i say kraken one demo and with this we can create a repository locally and i'll say create repo so i have a view something like this and this is my master branch i have a default default master branch and now i can create files i can uh, commit files we need to keep one point in mind that we should have git installed on our machine right if you don't have the git in, uh, git installed so it won't work because this tool is actually a git tool okay so let's create a file we can create some files from here so here in this section we can see all the files that we are working on so i'll keep this simple because i just want to make everything simple so that you could understand it better i'm not using any framework any java framework any string or js framework we can work on that later 
So let me create a simple file. So let me create a file and I can give the name of file here. File one. Now, now this is my file one. And this file has been created. And now this is an editable mode. So I can write anything here since it's I think it's a text file. So I can write my first comment. Okay, so I can write my first commit. This is just a simple sentence. So this file is in unstaged file, right? So this file is here in unstaged category. So I can move it to the staged file using this button. Either I can click here or I can click stage all changes. So let me click on stage all changes. I can say save and save. Now it's in the stage file. And if I want to move it back to unstaged, so I can just need to click here. If I move, if I click here, as you can see, it has moved back to the unstaged area. So since we want to commit this, so let's move it back to the staged area. And now to commit, I can write a commit message here. Let's say first, first commit. Okay. And I can commit this file. Right now, as you can see, this was the initialize commit. If it, this was a default commit that we get when we run the git, uh, git kraken. And this was our first commit. And in this commit, we have this one file. So if I want to create another file, say file two, right? And let's say, right, this is file two first commit. And then we will have to stage this file. I hope you know what is unstaged files, stage files. Uh, so you know all these different terminologies of it. So let's stage this file and save the changes. And then let's say, so now we have an option of amending the commit. That we, the commit that we did in the first part, the first commit, if we want to amend that commit, we can click on the amend and it will take the latest commit, the, the last commit. And we can use that also, or we can create a new commit. So let's use that commit and we'll say commit with two files, and I will amend the previous one. Now, as you can see, with this commit, we have two files here file one and file two. But with the initial commit, we only have one file, which is readme.md, right? So uh, this was just a very simple example of how we can initialize a repo and how we can create files and we can commit files in the next video we will further talk about uh, different features right we can create some branches and then we can move between those branches thank you hello and welcome to the git kraken series now we are going to create some branches and we will see how we can work with the branches here. So we are standing at local. So this is our machine and we are, we only have one branch, which is master branch. And we have only two commits on the master branch. So we will create a branch from here. We can right click here or also we can right click here also. We can say create branch. So, so I will be creating a branch from here and I will select this option, create a branch. And I can give a name. So I'll say feature branch one. So this is my feature branch one. And as you can see that, so now I have this, this branch has been checked out, right? Uh, I am assuming that you know what is the meaning of checked out. Checked out means that when you, when you, when you move your pointer to a branch. So if I want to come back to the master branch, I'll say check out master. Right, and as you can see, this tick mark is on the master branch now. And now here is, as you can see, the both the branches, the master branch and the feature branch, are at the same level because we have just created a branch using the master branch. So let me go back to the feature branch one, and I am checking out the feature branch one. And here we also have two files because we checked out, uh, we created the branch 
from the master branch. So let me um, so let me add something to this file. So we can I can see changes made at feature branch level, right? When I'm at the feature branch. So I can save this, right? Now, as I've saved this one, so I have to give the commit message or I can view this file is, is, an, is now in unstaged category. So I can move it to the stage file and now I can give message. So I can say first commit or I can say um, feature implemented. And I can say the version of the feature is let's say version one. And I can commit. Right, so now this is feature implemented, which is on version one. And also if I want to add something, so I can view all the files. And let me add one more file here. So I can say feature file, feature file one. And I will say feature file one. I am, so now this file is in unstaged area. I can move it, I can save this and add it to the staged area. Now it's in the staged area and I'll say feature, say feature branch or feature cemented version one okay so i haven't staged this file sorry so i have to stage this file first now it's in the stage file um, now this file is in a staged section and now i can come this file so now at feature one level i have um so in this commit i have file two and at this commit i have feature one and here I can see, I can switch from the master. So I've switched back to the master. And so I've checked out master here since you can see the tick mark is there. So it also giving us a tool tip with the information that checked out. And if I want to check this out, I can say check out feature branch. And I'm, now I am here. We can also create multiple branches. So let me create another branch at the master level. So normally in the cases, what happens is if you are working in a, a professional level or if you are working with multiple developers, there will be different people checking out master branch and they will merge their code back to the master branch. So you will check out from the master branch and then you work on your feature, you work on your bug fix or whatever you're working on and then you merge it back or you rebase on master before merging it so so let's let's try to create that scenario here and let's create one more feature branch so let's create branch here okay and i will say feature branch two so now the feature branch and the master branch both are at the same level and feature branch also contains these two files and let me create um for example uh, let us create and, and this is a commit hash right for every commit we have a commit hash okay so let us create a file here let's say file feature two and file on feature branch 2. This is a file for the feature branch 2. Then we have to stage this file. We have to save and stage. And now we can commit this and we can say feature implemented on 
PHA branch 2. Okay, and let's say this was version 2. So as you can see, there are this is a branch off. So this view, as you can see, it shows us that there is a feature branch, which is this one, which has two commits. Feature branch one has two commits, and feature branch two only has one commit. So or let's try to amend this file. Okay, so I will say some modifications in the feature and then i will save this file right save this file and now since i save this file i have to i have to stage this let's stage this and i'm not doing any amend right i can also amend but now i want to show the two different commits so modifications implemented version 2 implemented on feature branch okay and version 2 so let's commit this file now as you can see we have feature branch we have two feature branches we check and both feature branches we have checked out from master right so this is the feature branch 2 and this is the feature branch 1 and um, to make it further to make it more clearer let's create another branch sending at the master branch oh okay we checked out uh, it's not necessary to check it out but we can we can do that also let's create a branch here and let's say feature branch 3 now we have feature branch 3 and for example let's make change here Feature branch three added this line, right? So this line has been added by a feature branch here, or the person who is working on the feature branch three. And with this, we can uh, save this file and stage this file. We have saved this. As we saved it, we can go here and we can um, stage this file, right? We can stage this file, and we can say feature added feature added and let's say we can say version 3 so version is right now depicting like like a branch as you can see here we have three branches so this one is the feature branch 1 then we have the feature branch 2 and then we have the feature branch 3 and and all these three we branched it out or we created these branches based on the master branch since we created based on the master branch so they have all the code which are which is there on the master branch and we picked up that code and then we started working on that code so when we check out from any branch we we take all the changes of that branch all the files of that branch and then we work on that so this is how we can create branches in get kraken and we can then see different branches uh, here that's it for this lecture and i will see you in the next lecture hello and welcome to get kraken today we're going to talk about merging so we will merge branches to the master so for, for example we have three branches feature branch one feature branch two and feature branch three and we're going to merge one of these branches to the masters and we will see how it works uh, before moving and implementing the merging uh, feature i would like to briefly talk about the merging feature and i want to clear some concepts for those who are still confused how merging works so for example we have a master branch we have a master branch and we have a feature branch for example feature branch one and we have some commits so let me change the color and let me choose um okay so we have commit one commit two commit three and now we will branch off from here and we will create a feature branch 
so we will create let's create a feature branch from here so this is a feature branch and then we have some commits here right and now we have three commits and we want to merge it back to the master when we merge to the master we have a new commit at the master that will be called the merge commit so we will have a new commit at the master that will be called a merge commit so this will be a merge commit and we will merge this in, into the master so all the code all this code is merged into the master and this called and this commit will be called merge merge commit so this is uh, our merge commit one thing which we need to take care that is the merge conflict when we merge the code from one branch to another branch we can have something called merge conflict now what is a merge conflict a merge conflict is that you are we are merging two files file one and file this both are same files right this is file one and this is also file one and both the files have the same change on the same line so for example at this line there is a change in this line this is also change change means there is some code written or something is there and for example this is this file is on master branch and this file is in feature branch now the git doesn't know how to merge this which code or which line to take should it take both the lines or what decision it should take so it then says okay there is a merge conflict you have something here and something here and i don't know how to resolve it so we can we'll have to resolve this so uh, this is how it works in practical cases in in professional software development uh, where you have multiple developers then there is a little bit difference here and that difference is the difference is we have multiple developers working so for example you can have feature branch 2 feature branch 3 right you can have feature branch 4 uh, we, you can have multiple developers and they will also be merging back to the master right they are uh, multiple developers are working on multiple features or different features so in reality you will have this tree keeps on growing right it's not a constant not standing at the point where you branched off right so it is keep on growing so the the strategy the good strategy is to first pull before merge the standard that we use is pull from master right pull from master and then merge to master and then if you have any merge conflict so you can resolve merge conflict and so then you can and and when you merge back to the master you merge back to the master you definitely you have merge commit here right and this is how this all works so that's it for this lecture and in the next lecture we will implement uh, the branch merging thank you Hello and welcome to the video series on Git Kraken. Today we're going to talk about merging. In the last video, we saw how we can merge and what is the concept behind merging when we merge one branch into another branch. So now let's let's see how we can merge different branches. So we have four branches in total: master branch, feature, br feature branch one, feature branch two, and feature branch three so and let's see how many files we have in all these branches so if i if i select the master branch so at the master branch we have two commits right you can see here we have two commits uh, at the master branch the master branch is here and all the commits below this icon uh, are related to the master branch so we have two commits in the initial commit we only have readme.md file and in the second Commit, we have two files file one and file two 
and now now let's see how many commits we have for the feature branch for the feature branch as you can see this feature branch is we created this feature branch from the master branch so here is the link of the feature branch and we have three commits one two and three so let's click on the first commit so at this commit we have one file which is file two and as you can see this is a modified file so file two also uh, file two is also there in the feature, in the master branch so let's click on this one let's uh, let's see this this commit is related to the master branch and we have file one and file two so this plus sign shows that we added new files to this branch right and then we modified file two when we created this feature branch we modified file two and that's why we have this as uh, pencil icon then for the second commit on feature branch one we added a new file called feature file one right and then we added and we modified uh, another file which is file two so the file one and the file two were initially there uh, at the master branch when we uh, when we created the feature branch we got all the files that were there in the master branch we modified file one and file two and then we added a new feature file so let's try to change something in the feature branch i have already checked out feature branch and so this is the file two and let me add some comment here new some modification so i i added one line which is some modification just add two words and let's add something now we can uh, create a new commit or we can amend the last commit right so what i want to do is i want to create a new commit to show you a new commit i will save this file save this file and now we have uh, one file it says one file change in working directory so let's view the change okay so this file we just changed let's stage this file and say changes implemented okay and let's commit this change so now we have four commit on the feature branch right we have this commit which is the updation of file 2 then we added a new file with the name of feature file 1 then we have we, we added something we added some text in the file 2 and then in the last commit we again added something we changed we implemented some change okay so now let's merge let's merge feature branch 1 into the master branch right so to merge this i will i can right click on this master icon master branch icon and i can select this option merge feature branch 1 into master or i can right click here and i can say merge feature branch one into a master so let me use this option i can click here and i can say merge feature branch one into the master and now the ma the merge has been done as you can see we have a merge commit which is merge branch feature branch one so we merge the feature branch one into the master branch so now if i click on this master branch and i checked out this master branch and i have clicked view all files so i can see all the files feature file one which actually which actually is a file we created at the feature branch one then we have file one then we have file two and then we have readme file so we have all the files here at the master level so we merge feature branch into the master branch so I hope this will be helpful for you and you must have understood the concept of merging. And as you can see the link, this link also shows, th these lines shows you that where we are branching off or where we are merging into. So if, if you look at these lines of the Git Kraken tool, so you can easily understand. That's it. I will see you in next lecture.
Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about merge conflict and how we can resolve those merge conflict. So when we merge a branch into another branch, we often come across the situation in which we have modifications on the same line and then Git cannot identify which line to take and it shows that we have a conflict. We have two different codes at the same line and it needs the developer's help to decide which one to ignore or which one to add. So let us create that merge conflict case here and then we will resolve it. So in the last video, we merged feature branch one into the master branch. And now we will and we want to merge feature branch two into the master branch. So in the master branch, if I click all file, then it will show the all files of the branch. And if I don't click on this box, it will only show me the files which are related to the commit. For with this commit, right? So let me click on this, and now I have one, two, three, four files. So file two is is here, and if I go to the uh, feature branch two, so we have file two here. Let me uh, change something in the file two so that we could produce the merge conflict case. Uh, okay, so in this file we have one one comment. So let me write a new uh, line here file modify at line one i have this sentence let me save this i will save this save this file and i have now a chain so i will stage this file and i say file to modify by feature back Now, let's look at the master branch. And on the master branch of file two, we have a different line, right? We have at line one, we have a different uh, sentence. So it's, it looks like that it will create a merge conflict because a git cannot understand which line to take. Now, let's uh, merge feature into the master branch. So I have checked out feature branch. And if I right click on the master branch, it says merge master into feature branch, which we do not want. So I will have to check out master branch and then we want feature to be merged into the master. So let me check out master branch. Now I have checked out the master branch. And now if I, if I will click on feature branch two, now I have an option that merge feature branch two into the master, right? So you will have to check out the branch that you are merging into and then you will merge the branch that you want to merge. So I have checked out master, right? We have checked out the master and then we want any branch we want to merge into the master. We can just right click and we, we, we will get this option. So let, let's click this option and let's see what happens. Right. So it says merge failed. There are merge conflict that needs to be resolved. Now, what is the merge conflict? How we can see the merge conflict? We can, can click here. And here you can see. So at line one, it says file modified and which is on the feature branch two. And on the master branch, there is a different uh, code or line. So Git doesn't know what to do. So what we can do is if, and this is the output like what we want to really what we really want to do so we say okay add this line now file modified and you can say okay add this line also and add this line also and add this line also, right so we took all the options right we merge this and we have resolved the conflict now we can um, save this right now we have saved this file and we have staged this file has also been staged and now the message is merged branch it's all good now you can see the there is no conflict resolution message and now let's commit and merge successfully we have merged successfully so that's it and thank you hello and welcome today we will talk about detached at state 
So we will understand what is a detached head state, what can be the problem with the detached head state, and how we can come back to the normal uh, head state. Let's first understand what is detached head state. So we have a branch. Let's suppose we have a feature branch. Feature branch. And we are uh, making some commits. And when we make the commit, we have a head that points to the latest commit on the branch. For example, we will have a head pointer that will point to the latest commit on that branch. If we make another commit, for example, now this head will move to the latest commit and it will here and point to the latest commit and we won't be having the pointer to the uh, old commit. So if you make another commit, now the pointer will move forward and it will point to the latest commit and we won't be having the pointer here. So the latest commit will be, uh, we can reference the latest commit with the head. The head points to the latest commit and it also gives the reference to the branch right it also gives the reference to the branch that this this commit is uh, is related to this branch right and if we make another commit then the same process we will have the, the head pointer pointing to the latest commit now what is detached head? for example if we check out a commit right if we check out a commit let's say this commit if we check out this commit then the pointer the head pointer will not be pointing to the latest commit rather it will be pointing to the checked out commit so now the pointer will point towards the checked out commit and this state this state in which the pointer the head pointer is not pointing to the latest commit is called a detached head state it's a, the head has been detached from this latest commit. Detached head state. Now we understand what is a detached head state when a head pointer is not pointing to the latest commit. Now this pointer is not actually giving us the information of the branch, right? Because the head has been detached. And if we make any commit in this state, for example, now we have checked out this commit, right? And let's say the SHA of this commit is 10F67V, a uh, random number I just chose. So if we make any commit here, if we make any commit here, or if we make any commit here, so there is a possibility that these commits can be lost. So what we can do to preserve these commits, we should make a branch. We should create a branch and we can preserve these commits. So now with the help of Git Kraken, I will show you how it works and then that will be easier for you to understand. So now we know what is a detached head and now let's see using the Git Kraken how we can uh, we can produce this case there. Okay, so now let's try to produce that case. Let's try to first uh, create a detached head state and then we will see what can be the problems with the detached head state. So now we have different commits here. So this is the first commit. And either we can check out this commit or we can check out this commit. This commit contains two files. Let's check out this one. This is this is an easier commit and we only have one file. So I will right click and I will say check out this commit. Now, as you can see, my head pointer is pointing here. And now let me commit something in the he detached head state. So I will Go to the file and say this is detached at eight just one line and i will save this i will save this. now here i can see one file change in the working directory i will view the change as you can as you can see here a message that you are in a detached head state why we are in a detached head state because this commit uh, we checked out this commit and this commit is right now not belonging to any branch yeah it is belonging to a branch but since we have checked out so it doesn't belong to any branch so what we can do uh, okay let's let's change this file and let uh, and let's make a commit so we say 
detach head commit right and i can commit so now i am in a detached head state so this commit is a detached head commit right okay so what is the problem what can be the problem now if i check out any branch for example if i check out master now you must notice that when i will check out this master i will lose this detached head commit right so let me check out this master branch and as you see i have checked out my master branch but i don't have the detached head commit anymore so this is a problem this this is something which we need to take care that if we are in a detached head, head state and if we are committing something and if we check out any other branch then we will lose all our work now what can be the solution of this let's produce the detached head state once again now let's make the commit the same commit I'll say detach and state okay let me save and commit this file save once again giving me the information that uh, and it's also giving me the tool tip if you can see it says that if you check out another branch or commit you might lose any commits created in detached head state as we just so now let's change this file and say detach and commit and let's commit this file. Now how we how I can preserve this information? I must create a branch, right? I have an option that create create branch here. So I will create a branch and I will say for example this was a hot fix. This was a production hotfix so and i will create the branch with the name of hotfix one now my detached head commit is a part of a branch and now it is safe now if i check out any other branch let's say let me check out master now my detached head commit is still there because my detached head commit uh, is not a hanging commit anywhere it now it it's linked to a branch and uh, I can use this branch to merge or to rebase or whatever I want. So this was about the detached head state and what can be the possible problems and how we can how we can solve the problem. So that's it for this lecture and I will see you in next lecture. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about squashing commits. So let's first understand what is a squash, how we squash the commits and why we need this. So let's create a branch. For example, we have a feature branch and we have some commits here. For example, this commit. So here we created a file for suppose we the message of this commit is file created. And then we have another commit. And then we say, let's say we say method updated. And then we made another commit and we made some mistake in the last commit and we and we said here that method fix right and then we did another commit and then we say that error resolved right now now we have these all three commits, for example, here we see, and, and these are actually the same file. We are doing some updations and every for every commit we are uh, updating something, but we don't want we don't want these to be to be pushed to the master, to, to be pushed to the remote. Why? Because because these don't look good. Instead, it would be better that if we would push only only one commit having all these all these changes it will be more professional and it will be more clean that if we push all these changes all these changes but in one commit so in this case we can use squash what squash will do squash will combine these three commits in the parent commit so this is the parent commit right this one is the parent commit and it will combine all these three commits in this commit in this one and we can then be we can then have only one commit right 
So after squash, what will be the case? So for example, we have feature branch and after squash, we will have one commit and then we can update the message, whatever we want to say, we, we can say that, we can say new feature added, right? We, we can say, uh, we, so it's a much proper uh, message and we can, and, and we don't have any repetitive commits. We only have one commit which looks good and clean and we can then push this to the remote repository, right? And if we are working in a team and then team looks as, at this one commit, then it looks good. And, the, and this one will look a kind of a garbage and it won't be a good impact in, in, in your team members. So for this purpose, we can use a squash. So now let's look at the Git Kraken and let's see how we can squash the commit. Okay, so now we are here and we have the Git Kraken tool and let's say we have this master, we, we are right now uh, at master branch and we have one file here. So this master file and we don't have anything in this master file. Let's say we add something, we add some line. So we say content added. Let's say one dot content. We added some content or some line of code or something like that. And, and we will save this. And now we have one file in the working directory. We can stage this file and we can say new content added. And we can commit this file. And now we want to make another change. So we will open up this file and we will say, for example, two dot some content added, right? And let's commit this file as well. So when working directory, we stage this file and then we say new content added, new content added, let's say two. And then we want to add another change or we want to update this file again, then we might say something, some new content added and we can save this file. We can save this file and we can again do the same thing, master, stage the file and we can say new content added three. Now, if you look at this, these, these three commits, so it, the, these three comments don't look good because they are some small changes we are doing in the file. And um, if we push this file to the master, then it won't look good. It's not giving a good impact. So what we want to do is we just want to send one commit, but we want to have all these changes also. We don't want to lose our changes. So what we can do is we can squash the commit. So there are some conditions in squashing and let's see what are those conditions. We have these five conditions when we squash using Git Kraken. So we have more than one commit selected. We, we, there should be more than one commit selected. It's very obvious so that we could squash. Youngest commit is the head. Genealogically consecutive, it means the parent-child relationship should be there. Chronologically consecutive and oldest selected commit has a parent. The last commit should have a parent. So let's see, and let's, let's go back to the Git Kraken and let's see, do we qualify all these five uh, criteria? Now, if we look at our changes, so we have the youngest commit and the head is pointing towards the youngest commit. The commits are chronologically consecutive and genealogically consecutive also. And the oldest commit, this is the oldest commit and it, it has a parent, which is this one. So if I select all these commits, I select all five, sorry, all four. Here we can see we have four commits and here we have the details of all four commits. I will right click on any commit and I can say squash four commits. When we will squash these four commits, these four commits, the first three commits will be added to the last commit. And that's how we can get rid of the additional or the repetitive commit. So now let's click this option. So now as you can see, we have only one commit here. 
and let's check the file so if i click on this master file i can see that my content is still there the data is still there but i have quashed all the commits and now let's see the message here we can see the message this is the 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 master file which is the actual message and we also have the messages from other commits so this is the new content edit message which was the commit message of one of the commits then we have this second message and then three and we definitely we don't want this to be to be there because this because th th this is not needed at all so we can remove all these from the description and now we can also change this message and we can say new file added i think it's enough and we can update the message so now we have the new message new file updated we don't have the uh, repetitive commits or the unnecessary commits that we did and now it's good to go we can push this to the remote repository i hope this will be helpful for you and i will see you in next video thank you